Welcome to another episode of the Carry Trainer Higher Line Podcast. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Higher Line Podcast. I've got my old friend Robert Danielson, Bobby, Big B of Alpha Munitions. The funny thing is, I realize I'm wearing his shirt and he's wearing our Gunfire Dallas shirt. Very cool. So you guys, we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff with Bob David. We're going to talk about, about entering a market space where you should have no business being successful and crushing it. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about um, giving more than you get. I think that's something you guys do exceptionally well in your business and uh, innovating. So that's what you guys do, right? This is one of your pieces of brass, which I swiped from you guys with your permission long ago. Yep when you guys um, were in your first shop. So tell, tell everybody a little bit about, about Alpha Munitions, just so they kind of get an understanding of, of what we're talking about. Perfect, yeah, so Alpha Munitions, uh, we started the business about five years ago. And the goal of the company is, is I, I say it's simple, but it's incredibly complicated. And we say it with um, great humility and, and fully understanding uh, how challenging uh, this is and the expectations, but our goal is to manufacture the highest quality, most consistent cartridge brass in the world, in the United States, uh, uh, backed by unparalleled customer service. So we cater to the long range shooting market, uh, both bolt action and gas gun rifles, um, but, but really catering to, um, you know, the 800 to 1,000 plus yards. Not so that's what I was going to say. You wouldn't buy this stuff to load up some 223 55 drain full metal jacket. You wouldn't, you probably don't even produce that stuff. We don't produce that stuff. Uh, the most common caliber that, that, that people would be, uh, um, that we produce right now, as far as widespread, is probably 308, but we don't do anything in the, in the, uh, in the 223 realm right now. Although I, I kind of wish we were at this point. So I'm holding a 6.5 Creedmoor. Is that that really is a 308 neck down, isn't it? Uh, for the most part, I mean it's a, it's a short action cartridge. Um, that was one of the original uh, calibers that we launched the company with, um, and, and you know it's 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 pretty interesting because it was kind of a uh, uh, aha moment I think for for a lot of people in the shooting community where they realized they could unscrew their 308 barrel. Uh, from their action, switch a barrel to a 6.5 Creedmoor, and you're effectively picking up another, you know, between three and 400 yards uh, crazy. Of, of range. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. So conventionally, most of the brass, all of the brass that people, they go to Cabela's and they buy a box of like um, some high-end match grade ammo. Uh, that stuff is made and machines pretty much that have been around since like the first world war, right? Same technology. Yeah. Just, just old school, um, uh, huge, uh, uh, presses that have multiple tools heads. So every time that press comes down, uh, you know, you could be making literally 50 or a hundred, uh, cases at a time. So you got, you got, you know, 50, 20, a hundred, depending on the machine, different tool heads, all making that brass coming down and stamping that brass out. Um, so now you have to assume are, are all those tools the exact same? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's, that's a traditional way of doing it. It's kind of, kind of the polar opposite way that, that, that we go. Your stuff. Well, let me go back. Why is it important? So accuracy. So you or I, if we're at the range and we've got our AR and a box of white bucket, two, two, three, whatever, it doesn't really matter. You're not going to extract that much accuracy out of those guns and that bullet combo. But when we start shooting far, why is the brass important as a component of the system? Well, uh, brass essentially is everybody, I mean, as I think most people know, is, is basically a pressure vessel, right? Actually, um, you're the, one of the only guys I ever hear describe it as such, which I like that. Yeah, and and so um, there are a few key um, uh, attributes to to a piece of, of brass um, that determine the pressure, which then releases and, and sends the bullet downrange. Um, 
to doing that consistently. Number one is case volume, right? Every piece of brass ideally has the exact same case volume, right? That's how much powder goes in it. So if there's more case volume um, uh, in one case versus the other, then you're going to create different pressure if you put the same load in. Mm-hmm. Neck tension. Um, how much tension is being put on the bullet? Now, hand loaders can go back and they can set that themselves, um, but OEMs sometimes do it. They don't tend to do it all the time. Um, and those along with a couple other things, but those are really the two key um, uh, components to, to having highly consistent uh, results downrange mm-hmm. as far as it pertains to the case. Um, th- those are, are, are two of the absolute key components. So what we're trying to do is create a pressure vessel that gives us a consistent velocity like as long as we put the same amount of powder in and the bullet is consistent and we do our part, we're just taking that out of the equation. And, and, and that's really all we're trying to do as far as um, quality and as far as consistency. And there's only a few other big companies in the world that make brass that's considered like high end rifle brass, right? There's just a handful of them. Yeah, I mean, I would go as far as to say, if you if you look at the shooting community, there's really only a handful of of real manufacturers of of rifle brass in general. Um, but then there's out of that um, out of that small pool of of manufacturers, there there's really only a couple that uh, that are really um, catering to the highest end market mm-hmm. uh, within within the precision uh, shooting community. You guys have really, I know in just the last couple of years, people that are in that, that realm from special operations to uh, long range competitive shooters and just people that for fun want to shoot way far away, you become known as like the go to, which is awesome. Didn't that seem uh, like for me, if I was trying to get into a market space where I'm dealing with companies that have been around a century or more, and they've got millions of dollars of equipment and you guys started from like at the range in crystal lake sitting around the table shooting the shit or in in woodstock rather uh mchenry there chatting and just kicking around ideas you didn't have equipment you didn't have you weren't already producing you know similar products you all have business and manufacturing backgrounds but you didn't like like how did you decide on that that seems daunting (laughs) Uh, on, decide on the equipment that we went with or, or the, no, the like on, rifle well, breast biz, businesses you could go into and you guys could have the, the, you guys, so you guys have an engineer on staff, right? You've got a badass engineer. You've got you who's been an entrepreneur and business guy for 20, 25 years. Right. Um, Mark, your CEO, you've got Jim who's a legend in the sniper yeah. shooting community as your technical guy. Um, my brother, who's a rock star in, in in his own right, as far as business is is concerned. I didn't mean to didn't mean to omit. Him. No, yeah, pardon me. Well, I just it's just that to me, it's all about the team. But yeah, um, so how do we get into it? So we we spent a fair amount of time once we determined that we were gonna uh, we all ha- we all had other businesses separate from from one another, and once we determined that we were gonna gonna start something. Um, we, we took the time and really thought about what we wanted to do and um, the industry that we wanted to be in. Uh, and then we looked at within that industry, which is uh, the shooting community, right? The, 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 however you want to phrase it, shooting, defense, sporting um, community. We, uh, we really looked at where we could make a difference and make an impact. And, um, we spent a lot of time looking at uh, some companies to buy, um, which were uh, companies that were already established um, ammo. I call them assembly companies, OEM loaders. Um, and we kind of, and I don't know what that aha moment was, but we spent a bunch of time and, and, and realized um, that if we put the same capital into a real manufacturing business, because to, to run a, a, any sort of ammo ammunition company, especially in times like right now, you've had to have a huge amount of inventory of powder, primers, brass. Um, so, so these companies, uh, 
who load ammunition, I mean, you, you deal with Superbell. I mean, you've been to their facility. How many components and how much money and components do they have sitting on their shelf and, and mm-hmm. at any given time? Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we said, okay. And all, well, the, and all the equipment to put it all together. Yeah, and then the knowledge that, knowledge that uh, uh, you're paying for with, with your employees and the professionals that you, and, and, and team members that you, you, you work with. So mm-hmm. um, one of the things that... Um, after after really looking at the uh, at the home marketplace, we kind of realized, well, hey, what drives innovation within our industry? What 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 drives change? And we realized that, um, in our opinion, uh, brass properly uh, head stamp brass. There's a whole wildcatting community out there, right? Um, and wildcatting means you would take like a 308 and you would put it through manually a, a, a uh, a, a die process where you could neck it down to six, five creed more. You could do it with a, a variety of calibers that turn into something else. But um, those calibers never take off, right? Because it's, it's not properly head stamped SAMI um, uh, approved rounds. So um, we realized quickly that there was two, two areas and two components to driving change um, that, you can really go after one is you have to have factory rifles. Um, so six, five Creedmoor, let's talk about that. If there were no factory rifles for six, five Creedmoor, right? How big would six, five Creedmoor be right now? Right now mm-hmm. I, I believe, and don't quote me, but I think six, five Creedmoor is the fastest growing uh, rifle caliber um, in the United States or the world. I mean, it is, it is going gangbusters cause it's a, mm-hmm. it's a great replacement for 308. But in order to have factory rifles, you have to have, factory brass. And um, once we kind of had that aha moment and realized that, we started looking, well, how do you make brass? Uh, What equipment is available? Um, And so we took a a significant amount of time and and resources and and looked literally around the world at at our options and um, finally came upon one that we thought we could, we could make work and, and um, honestly just went, went full bore on it. And you guys to do what you're doing, creating this super precision brass had to design basically your whole process to make it. It wasn't like you just went to Walmart and bought a machine that spits this shit out. You spent years curating and, and cultivating those processes, right? Yeah. And it, and it's, and it's constant. Um, it's, it's, uh, um, one thing we realized was that, uh, number one, um, f- for us, uh, and, and with the resources that we were able to bring to, um, to the business, those, those real high volume, uh, uh machines just, they didn't fit what we were trying to accomplish. Um, so we went with a, a design that was a, a single point tooling design. Um, and, and really worked hard once we had established what's important and what are our, our parameters that we're going to manufacture in and our tolerances that we're going to manufacture in, uh, it was then, all right, how do we get there? Um, so it, it, it's constant. I mean, to say that, uh, we're about to come out with another big, um, for, for the brass at the small industry that we're in, um, we think that we've kind of hit the holy grail of uh, of not just making highly consistent brass case to case, lot to lot, um, but we've made something that is extremely durable, which we already have this, we have, we have a very durable product now, but we had a couple aha moments a couple of years ago, we've been working towards something. Uh, and then the next six months or so, there's going to be some changes to our, our um, brass that is not dimensional, um, not volume wise, but just in the structure of it, uh, that, that really are going to send us, um, over the top as far as, as far as the quality and what, what can be done with it. What would you say if I said it must be nice that you're successful now? Must be nice. Well, what's your definition of success? I mean, you, you guys are selling, you, you, the stuff's moving out in pallet loads. There's, uh, anybody that seems to really know anything about this stuff, uh, has nothing but good things to say about it. I mean, that, that happened overnight, right? It was like, uh, 
you guys just came up with the idea and then it happened. Just sat around a couple nights and chatted yeah. about it, printed some flyers up, put them on some cars at the local grocery store. And next thing you know, you were selling, selling brass, right? So you just share my business plan, huh? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you guys, lot, buddy. you and I talked for years though, over the course of, um, of the, uh, the growth in, in trajectory of your, of the, your brand. And we've stopped out. Uh, we've, I've been to both your locations in Utah. You guys are, um, are in a, a new building now that you just bought and outfitted for growth, which is cool. But I, I know you talking about we'll be profitable like someday, someday. And it wasn't like just wishes. You just knew it's going to take all of this grinding and slugging it out to get there. Talk about that a little bit. Well, I mean, you not to shove it back at you, but you know this as good as well as anybody. I mean, uh, it, it's it's about it's about getting the right team together. In my opinion, my, it's it's about having the right people around you, um, and those people can be your your team that are directly involved in in uh, in the business. Um, and then it's about honestly, yeah, it's about about pain, accepting pain, working through pain. Um, and the moment you think you can't take any more pain, you, you get more of it and then just <laughs> working through it. Um, you know, it, it's, that, that's really what it is. And it, it's, it's everybody in the same page, uh, that you're working with, um, having that, that desire that we're not going to fail. Uh, there is no plan B. Um, and, you know, I, I, I kind of push back on, you know, are we successful right now? Uh, I, I definitely think we've made great strides. Um, I'm definitely thankful for how the community has embraced us. Um, I, I honestly didn't expect it. Uh, uh, but at the same time, like, I, I don't feel like, uh, I, I think if there's, you know, if we had a zero to, to 10 scale, as far as, where we are and where I think we should be. I, I think we're probably at a, maybe a one. Um, <laughs> I, I, I mean, <laughs> seriously, it's, 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 I, I think yeah, through the moment you, you get comfortable, like it, it, it's about, it's about comfortable. I wasn't suggesting that you should be retiring on a beach. I know you guys still no, have no, no, road, but, to, road to go. But <laughs> I remember sitting at the range and Herb and you had some basic um, machining tools, micrometer, you know, as one of them. And we're just talking about dimensions of, of brass and talking about some of the, the critical points and angles and things like that. And I just happened to be there. And so I was like, oh, what are these guys up to? And so at that point, thinking about all that goes into now having these super expensive, finely tuned. Uh, I remember talking with you like, yeah, the thing that we created, we have to like recreate again because it's not working. Yeah. And, and by the way, that costs like what a house costs. So here we go again. And you kept grinding it out where most people would be like, this is just freaking stupid or insane, or I can't or won't keep going through this pain. So the fact that that I can buy this now in a box with your logo on it, put it in a rifle, shoot it, and of course pick it up and reload it again because that's the what, what these things are for. That's a, a lot farther than sitting at that table at yeah. the range all those years ago. That was like six, seven years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it's uh, it, it is crazy. Um, uh, I think that anybody's capable, honestly, of, of, of accomplishing that. And when I say that, meaning like I, Andrew Richson, who's our director of engineering, who's our vice president of engineering. Um, our first day when we walked in, when we first took possession of our equipment, I remember I said to him just because he, he was a, he's a younger guy, right? I'm in my mid forties, but I just said to him, I said, okay, I want you to remember this moment. Um, because we're in a basically a dump of a, of a warehouse in a small little space. Um, 
the truth is you always think you know what's in front of you, you don't know what's in front of you. Um, what you're expecting to find is, uh, I, it's just never the case, right? So, um, and, and that's something we would repeat to each other over the course of years, even when we were just in what we felt like were horrible positions. Um, when we realized that, that this equipment that we had invested uh, to us a, a absolute fortune in um, just wasn't accomplishing what, what we needed to, um, it's, it's demoralizing. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it, is, it is interesting to look back um, to sitting back at, at the range and, and um, having this idea and, and, and writing it all down and, and, and going down that road to uh, being in a position where it's like, all right, well, you know, like sink or swim, because if this fails, uh, you know, personally, um, it's going to be hurt. It's going to hurt uh, uh, financially in a lot of ways or just absolutely hammer through it. It's, it's, it's like anything. It's training. Right. Um, and it's 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 the mind over matter uh, that you can always get through these obstacles. It's just what resources are you willing to throw at it? And um, and actually the guys, I mean, that we know, right. That some, one of the things that, that, uh, you know, Shane and Justin and all those guys, they'd always say the only two things you can control in life are attitude and effort. Right. Um, that, that's what a lot of this is, but yeah, I mean, I guess relative to where we were, you know, three, four, five, six years ago, uh, we're in a completely different position now, but with that, uh, you know, where we're sitting right now, that wasn't our ultimate goal. So I, I don't spend too much time dwelling on, uh, you know, how great we are and what position we're in right now. It's, it's sure. what are we doing 12 months and, and 24 and five months and, you know, five years from now, what's this going to look like? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I look at, look at, that. look at behind you, look at carry trainer, look at gunfighter gun oil. I mean, you did the exact same thing, man. There's a group of us. It's, it's, and I honestly, I attribute a lot of where, I am to, to my friends and, 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 um, the people I surround myself with. I mean, look at what you've done. Look at what, what that um, brings up a, a great point, And I appreciate you acknowledging that. Cause it's in the same as you, nothing's ever as it seems though. I mean, you compared to where you want to be it's never like okay i gotta do this i gotta do that but you have to at some point step back and assess okay we did you can look behind you at the your footsteps in the deep snow and say i know i came that way it was it was hard it sucked and or it was awesome what well, it might not it might have not always been drudgery i saw some cool shit there was that bobcat that kind of was cool there yeah. were those chicks drinking beer at that ski slope thing that was super cool I tripped and fell when I thought I was being cool on those icy rocks. That was not awesome. You look back yep. and when I cross those again, I will go slower. I'll be more mindful. <laughs> the point about friends though, you and I've talked sometimes, uh, I won't talk to you for months at a time and then we'll get on the phone and just start bouncing ideas around and I'll get off the phone and be like, man, I feel like a bitch, you know, cause I'll listen to what you guys are doing and it's not a challenge. It's not like you're saying, what have you done? But I'll listen. And it's like, and I'm like having a hard time, like cranking out some Instagram posts where I got to take pictures of guns. Like, uh, and then I hear like, you guys are like, well, oh, we literally have just put another satellite into orbit and it's pretty neat. Yeah. Because we, 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 you get what I'm saying though. Yeah, but, but it you, goes you, both you, ways, man. Like, you you know, I mean, yeah, but that's, that. I mean, it's honestly, it's like training partners. I think that's the kind of the, that's part of what I like so much about our community of people. It's, it's, um, you know, the hard conversations and, and um, yeah, I, I'll give you, I'll give you a good example. Like my buddy and I'm not trying to, but our, our friend, Justin Walker, right. Mm -hmm. uh, have it. Justin's a, a good friend of mine um, back in Chicago and uh, former uh, uh, Swick and, and just one of these guys who's, I, and I think we all are right. We're overachievers, but so I'm on, uh, I haven't talked to him in a, in a couple months and um, I'm on Facebook the other day and I look and the son of a bitch wrote a book, right? <laughs> so now I'm, I got to tell you to, an honest, sure. I'll tell you an honest assessment of how I feel because I, I literally, this, I looked at five in the morning, right? He had just somehow, I was the first person to like it, but 
my girlfriend's sleeping in the bed. And I'm going through. I, I go, I am a piece of shit. Like <laughs> I am the laziest. This is what's going on. I am the laziest. Like this guy just wrote a book. Right, and I know he's just as busy as I am. Right, <laughs> and he this just, son of a just wrote a book. Crank out. Yeah. So what I do, I got up and I went to work. Um, you know, it, it's but but that is like. And by the way, in, in saying that, like I'm super happy for him, I, and he's going to have sure. all the success in the world, same as you. But like, the, this is the level that I guess um, we all expect from each other, right? And and um, we all know that we can do it. Um, so that, I mean, that if there's anything in life I'm most thankful for, it's, it's, um, my friends and family that that I am lucky enough to be surrounded by. Mm -hmm. That brings up another question. So like, um, myself, if I was a guy that like every time I called you and, and was like, oh man, it's so hard. I'm not really getting anything done. And that fruit of my, of my work was like a lot of stuff not getting done eventually you probably wouldn't take my calls anymore. You'd be busy because you'd be too busy to talk about bullshit. Just as I would be if, if every time I talked to you, it was just like, eh, I need a little motivation. Maybe you can cheer me up. I'd be like, man, I can't, I can't like do this for you. Like, you know, you get like some problems and you challenge each other. But if every time you talk to me, I was just being a freaking turd holding the bar stool down <laughs> at some pub, you'd, you'd eventually not have time for my calls. Yeah, but by and I mean, but my my point in bringing it up is like I I think what we're talking about is valuable, but a lot of times people look. I can't if I hang out. I was thinking about this the other day talking to somebody. I did a post on it, and I said, "Don't hang out on pirate ships if you want to be around honest people." Like, and because this person had folks that kept, I'm like, "Well, you're hanging around shitheads if all your friends keep burning you. Like, they're not your friends; they're shitheads." Like. Right. Uh, you, people hear this and they'll be like, man, I want to hang out with guys that build companies out of thin air. Well, don't hang. If all of your circle of friends are not doing that, you can't like go to the tavern or wherever and be like, Hey guys, I was really thinking I would like a bunch of buddies that were entrepreneurs. Can you guys be entrepreneurs for me? Yeah. Like that's not going to happen. Put down your tequila at two in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Instead, instead, right. uh, instead build a right. company. Right, right, right. You got to, I think so that you have to start changing yourself or motivating yourself or whatever it is that, that you're chasing, losing weight or getting better it, at something. I mean, you are, I, I, it's, it's a cliche, but, um, I, like I want, I don't buy into it more than I, I do now. Like, I don't think I could, like you are who you hang around period. Mm -hmm. End of story. Yeah. Um, and if you're lucky enough to be, like with, with just an absolute group of rock stars and you're the low man on the totem pole, like um, you're still doing all right if they accept you and, and you, you know, you're not sucking them down, but that's what pulls you up. Yeah. Um, There's an interesting and, thing to that that I think is it. I was listening to something today. I think Sam Adams said it, the, the um, founding father and he was talking about um, being virtuous and like, like him and Ben Franklin both had wrote about this, something along the lines of uh, a country in government like ours only works with virtuous people. Not the point I'm trying to make, but like you, if you just go out and start seeking like successful people, cause I need to be around them. That's kind of for the wrong reasons to do it mm -hmm. as well. Like, oh, I'm not going to hang out with any of you losers you know what's, what's your credit score man or what's your, what's your yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. I need you to fill out this survey before i spend any time with you i but i think it's more along the lines of it it's uh and i think there is something to and there, there's more to it than this and i'm oversimplified but there is something to ambition there is something to uh, personal drive right um mm. you know it's it's listen uh it's the same way that I was one of the best things that ever hap happened to me was, was Herb's range. Right. It, it literally opened my eyes up, um, to, um, what could be, uh, and, and, and especially as an adult, right. I mean, you and, and a few other guys, I went in there and, and, um, for sure. I mean, there's, there's, I'm not saying to, to degrade myself, but like I was absolutely the low man on the totem pole. I was absolutely the, the, um, uh, 
worst of the best, I guess, or however you want to put it. Like, and, and you're talking about from a perspective of like shooting guns or something, though. Yeah, right? but but you but but because listen, I think I'll give you a prime example. One of the greatest people in the world, I think you'll agree with, like Les Kismarconi, right? Mm -hmm. Like he he, I think about him how he would handle things um, more often than than uh, I ever thought it would. Like if if somebody he if he sees somebody who's really truly interested and, and, and um, same as you, Mickey, like, and, and I hope that I, I, I do the same thing, but somebody who really is, is trying to learn something and has a genuine interest and, and, and obviously good intentions, um, whether it be whatever, I mean, you and I were talking about how he called you up on something and, and some interest, you know, yeah, it just happened to be looking at your website or something, right? Like I yeah. saw you could do this, right? Like it's just, it's a natural thing if you're, that you want to help that person, right? Um, and, and, and we want to see, I, I think it's great to see other people succeed. Um, so I, it's, it's, I don't think it's just like, Hey, you know, that, that guy drives a Ferrari. I want to drive a Ferrari. <laughs> hey buddy, will you be my friend? Like, okay. Yeah. Like, will you buy me a Ferrari? It's, it's, mm -hmm. you gotta be willing to, if someone's willing to put in the work and, and whatnot, I mean, how can you not respect that? It's a, it's an kind of an irresistible thing. Somebody that will strive to do something, be it being a pole vaulter or a football player or a competitive shooter or a business owner, you're, we're drawn. We, who doesn't want to be around the person that kicks ass at, at something? Yeah. I mean, it, it, listen, I, 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 like, like, go ahead. Doctors, teachers, um, you know, whatever the profession is, the, the people who are playing the top of their game. I mean, I, you, I, that's hard. That is F that is, that is hard um, mm -hmm. to play at the, the, the top of the game on, on a, on a large scale. But uh, at the same time, I got to tell you, like humbly, like it's, it's fun um, and it's rewarding. Something I learned from a guy long ago, he was an entrepreneur. He was really good at starting and getting the, he'd get these awesome ideas and he'd start stuff and then he didn't like running it. He was all into the buildup and so he'd usually burn down and then he'd, like, a couple years later, he'd get another great idea and he'd make money, but then he'd kind of pitter out. But I remember talking to him one time about that. At one point he had like 50 stores and this was like in the late eighties, um, early nineties, all over like all the malls in Chicago land. He had this specific niche store. I don't want to say what it is cause I don't want somebody to hear it and hear what I'm saying about him. But I would say to him, like, you had it, man. Like, you had it dicked. You had all this stuff. You had all these employees. Money's coming in. Like, literally, he it was a joke. He would go um, from his car to the house with a wheelbarrow of cash after going to all these stores and picking up money. And they'd do the, you know, the money counting like it was like a drug dealer or something. And then he'd yeah. take it to the bank. But, um because that's before credit cards and all that became such a big thing. And he was sure. successful. Anyway, he said the thing he loved more than anything was being able to buy his mother a car or take all the employees out to like lobster in steak dinners. And he just loved that. And that was like, he didn't love the, the daily grind. He didn't love any of that. But your point about it's fun. That was his fun. It was like, he found one part of it that he loved and it just, it wasn't enough to sustain his businesses though. But that's so, so, and I don't know your friend. I really don't know who you're talking about. So here's, here's the hole I find in that, that, um, I'm not suggesting uh, that's a good way to be either. No, but I mean, so let me, let me like, I'll tell you what, what should be more fun. Like, yeah, of course I like steak. Um, and, and I guess it would be nice to buy my mother a car or buy my friends cars. But, uh, um, to me, and I think to you, and I think if you talk to a lot of people, like what's really cool to me is um, to, to build something that, for lack of our terms, is a perpetual entity that, that like, you, I don't, it's not me giving back. Like, hopefully what we are creating here um, brings value beyond our lives. Um, and so, yeah, of course I want steak dinners. I mean, that's, there's a lot of things we all like toys right i mean we got i got a wall full of guns so do you i mean there's there's things we like but i think i don't think that any of us um that we that i know of within within like our group of friends consider we we value our lives based on the material items that we personally have um i think those are just 
benefits of hopefully the hard work and hopefully success. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you, Making uh, money, I guess, is easy I, for some people. If if it, but it's doing it the right way, I think, is the hard way. Yeah, for sure. I think you know some of the stuff like we we're talking about. It just popped in my head. Not that it's not known to you, but some of the stuff that you're making here is saving people's lives too. You know, this stuff is is used by some pretty bad dudes, uh, and it's got to work. So it's not like you're selling um, ice cream or something like that. That's that might be a great product, but people can die if this stuff doesn't work right, which is you know pretty sobering. Which yeah, is why it, uh, every Thursday we, like, at our meetings. Uh, I mean, that you ask anybody here, it's it's we make every piece as if someone's life depends on it because there's a very good chance it does. Mm-hmm. Quality control is kind of your jam there. You guys like touch and look at every single piece that that moves through there sometimes multiple times right so uh yes but you saw i think when you're out here last time we had that we're that machine that we've been working on and and designing is finally coming together but yeah up until um and and still today we're just we're we're, uh, for lack of a better term shaking down this new piece of, of qc equipment that we literally designed and built um in house, but yeah, up until uh, that's running, um, we we take measurements as we're manufacturing of about a third of the parts, uh, and then after that product is manufactured, um, it goes through final QC, and it's it's really handled three times with people wearing gloves, so there's no smudges on it, um, uh, and it's checked three times before it goes into the box and and shipped out to customers. The piece of equipment that you're talking about, I know it's um, hush hush. Is there anything you can say about it or talk about? Yeah. Um, so the piece of equipment is an automated quality control um, uh, machine um, that uh, I don't know. I, I know there's others in the world that uh, other companies that have manufactured them for other purposes and maybe um maybe within our industry but there's nothing that even measures the tolerances and and all of the dimensions and everything that we do with ours uh so basically we will be able to um number one keep up with uh, our our slowest po- the the bottleneck in our process right now is quality control for the reason i just said we got three people touching every piece um so it's going to increase our throughput dramatically but uh, more importantly, uh, every single piece of our product that goes into our box, right? We will know every key dimension um, of every single piece that we That's send out crazy. to our customers. Um, we we know every single weight. We know everything about that piece of brass. Um, that, I saw well, the machine. Whether, it was pretty impressive. It's it's. Uh, it's impressive, and, and fortunately, we've got um, my brother and, and Andrew and, and, a, and a few other people here that are a lot smarter than I am that have figured out how to uh, how to how to get this thing uh, built and up and running. So um, it's it's it really is an impressive piece of equipment. Another example of a daunting task. When you were telling me about it, you know, you hear that you're like, "Well, come on!" There's all these companies that are huge. They got to have a piece of equipment like that. And I've been in ammo manufacturing facilities, and you're right. I mean, they have things that do things that check certain stuff, maybe the weight, um, but not doing the scale and scope of what you guys have designed and built there. But it's taken you several years of of energy investment and and uh serious time debugging and working it out every bit of two years that's crazy Um, it's crazy but i mean it's it's crazy but at the same time it's you know i think you learn things as you get older too right uh with some things you have less patience um with uh with others you realize you have to have more and talk um, about that a little bit uh the less patience or the more patience how about both start with less 
well, I mean, for myself, I have less patience for shitheads um, <laughs> and, 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 and lazy people and, and uh, people who go out and cause carnage and destruction and don't even understand why they're doing it. Um, I have zero patience for that at this point. Um, and I have, I have no patience for excuses. Um, mm. But at the same time, I realize that when you're, you're doing something, the right way is the hard way. Um, and there's a book I read a long time ago, it's called no shortcuts to the top, right? It's, it has nothing to do with our industry or whatnot, but the, the people, the, the hardest path, um, the right path and, and the right, the, the way of really getting there, um, there's, there's sometimes maybe shortcuts, but if you really want to do it, you just have to take the time and resources and realize that, that that's what it takes. Um, mm -hmm. whether it's time, whether it's money, whether it's pain, whether it's, um, whatever it is to get to, uh, your goal, which if, if it's, uh, if it's something that's difficult, that's hard, um, the right way is the hard way and you've got to have patience in doing that. Uh, and, and you know, it's, it's like a lot of things you, you can't be flustered for too long. You can't be, um, you have to accept things as is what it is. And then you, instead of going home and getting depressed about it or whatnot, you have to get on it and, and find solutions. You understand through that, uh, awareness of what is that, getting upset is a waste of energy. You just work through it or choose to go work as a clerk somewhere or whatever. Yeah. I mean, if it's absolutely, I mean, if, if, uh, if you want to play at, at, you know, there's, there's lots of ways to do things and, and, um, you know, different strokes for different folks, quite honestly, there, there, there's, there's, but if you think you're going to get into something where people are going to be critiquing what you do, um, listen, I mean, Everything you do, it's the same thing. I'm not teaching you, like, telling you anything that, that you aren't doing. You're one of the people that reinforces this uh, um, and, and exemplifies it is, you know, you're going to have everybody, more people telling you why you can't do something than why you can. Um, sure. Those are the shitheads. Um, but, you know, honestly, like you said, like the guy who calls you up every week and, and has an idea or never makes it, like at some point, enough's enough. Like, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Um, that doesn't do anything. No one gives a shit. Pardon me. Um, <laughs> as, you're, as you're talking about the things that you have less patience for, people like that, some of them are nice young men. They'll call and they'll, like, you know, look for a, a little pump of some, you know, self, self love. And, and some of them, after enough time, I'll go, hey, I, shithead is a good term. But I'll be like, now. Now you're just going to start sucking out of me like a freaking vampire because you don't have the Suck sack to look at yourself in the <laughs> mirror and yeah, yeah. do it. You know, like uh, somebody else can tell me I'm, I, you know, maybe I'll be better tomorrow. Yeah. That's I mean, I a lot of people this. just get, just get hammered or, you know, get high because they just don't want to deal with it. Yeah. And there's exceptions to what I'm about to say, but you know, it's one thing when a, when a 24 year old or 25 year old, or there's a certain age, right. I say it to people all the time. There's certain, like I get, I was a shithead when I was younger. I have no problem admitting it. Like, I right. I wasn't a bad was. person, but I was, a, I was a, I was a jerk and a shithead. Um, and, and you know, that only lasts so long, right. Um, you know, you, the things that the, the stupid things that people can get away with at 23, they look one way, right. He's 23. He's dumb. Right, he just hasn't experienced life. He'll get, he'll get it. Um, yeah. Now you do the same thing at 33. It's a very different story. You know, uh, if you're living in your parents' basement right now, haven't done shit with your life, and you're my age, like I'm not going to help you, and nobody else is. Yeah. Um, so it, you know, but but the younger people, yeah, I mean, there's there's guys. You know, confidence is something that takes. It, it's a it's a continual thing. Did you say competence thing. or confidence? Well, both, I guess. Um, okay. But but confidence, right? Confidence to 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 step out of the 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 safe world that some people are living in, right? Um, same as again. I mean, I'm talking to them right now, right? I mean, where were you? What were you doing ten years ago? And what are you doing now? Something completely different. Yeah. Um. 
right? I mean, I'm sorry, that is a little scary. I have, I have no problem admitting like, you know, if you tell me that you don't have moments of terror when you get outside of your comfort zone, um, either maybe I don't believe you or um, Are you talking to me I, or just in general? In general, like, yeah. you know, ter- I'm t- there, there has to be that level, right? So I get reinforcing that stuff, but uh, yeah, I mean, at, at some point, sack up, um, shut up. And if I'm talking to you too much, that means you're not working. Um, that's why you and I don't talk every night. Number one, we just don't have the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, you know, there, it's there, it's there, it's the confidence thing I think is huge, man. You, you see it through the writings of great men and women, um, Ford, whether you think you can or you think you can't, right? right. Uh, Lincoln said, said a very similar quote. It's like, um, like I know if you told me, hey, we sold Alpha. It was a great sale, made a ton of money. I'm going to go start making hair care products. I'd be like, oh, that's weird. But I know you'd kick ass making hair care products. I'd be like, what are they? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it, it's the same uh, formula. And, yeah. But it all starts with like, like you said earlier, when you guys put the company together, failure wasn't an option. There's no plan B. That's, a, that's, I, I think parents do that disjustice to their offspring. Like, okay, but what's your backup plan, Timmy or yeah. Sally? Those names aren't even used anymore. Now they're like Colton. Yeah, cool names. Yeah. Gunner. Gunner. Yeah. I can't even think of a girl's name that's cool. Uh, Allie. I'll just say Allie. that. My girlfriend. I mean, it's not, yeah. I'm not being yeah. negative. I'm if you named your kid no, no. Colton or Allie, we're just saying they're just not old school names. Like, yeah. It's, hey. uh, yeah. Mercedes. Oh. Yeah. Are they doing that again? I don't know. Oh, I haven't seen many Mercedes license, or Chassis license to lately. drive when we were kids. Remember that movie with uh, <laughs> yeah. Corey Corey Haim? Was it? Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah. Mercedes, um, that was her name. No, but so you're saying disservice to to the parents doing disservice to their kids by giving them like yeah, what's your you know, backup like, plan? Te- well, teaching them like you know, so you got to you know, going to go to school. You're going to get a degree in. Uh, business and marketing or nursing, but what's your backup plan? You know, do a, a minor in, in PE or, or literature so you can go work at the high school and you'll make, you know, a decent living and you can support yourself. Like all you've done is dilute your focus and dilute your education and dilute your, your fervor to, to finish a, the thing. Yeah. And I, I mean, Mark Booth, who's, who's, um, my best friend and business partner, I me, mean, there's a couple of things that he, he really, um, and again, it's, it's a little embarrassing saying that these are things that really were driven into me in my, into my head, um, at, at what I consider an older age, right? Like my, uh, I mean, I, I would repeat these things to myself every time I would go into the shop and I still do. Um, but you know, we're diversifying a little bit now, but is that he said to me and, and continually said to me, and I don't know why they resonate with me. Number one, focus is an incredible tool. Um, you know, in my previous career, I was selling a, 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 and, and, and manufacturing a, a, a variety of different products, right? Um, when we started Alpha, and, and that's why I said we had such a focused um, mission statement, which was, uh, uh, highest quality, most consistent brass in the world backed by in parallel customers, by in parallel customer service. All I had to do was figure out, like, make the best brass, period. Period, that's it, make the best brass. Um, the other one that if you really think about it, um, and this applies to what you were saying, is fear is a great motivator. Fear is a great motivator, right? Um, that was something else Mark had told you? Mark had told me, and, and when you think about that, that applies to, listen, that applies to a lot of things in life. We, we find out who we are. I think, um, I'll speak for myself. I find out who I am more and more when I feel fear. And, sure, how, and then I, I agree with that. How, how I react to it. Um, and that doesn't mean that's not fearful of, of you know, that part of it's in, in the training, right? Of, 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 combative training. Um, 
we learn a lot about ourselves that way. But that also applies to, you know, when, when you walk into the office and immediately somebody drives their, their elbow into your nose, shatters your nose, and next thing you know, somebody comes and kicks you right in the nuts, right? Like you're standing there. Um, what's coming next? Um, you know, the, the confidence. Tough, to, tough, to, tough office. I, I use that analogy here all the time. I mean, so there, there's, that's what it feels like sometimes, right? If, mm-hmm. if we're being honest, but um, you know, the fear of failure and, 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 and not having a backup plan. Um, I, I think that pushes, pushes someone harder, right? It's, it's the same thing that is the parents who um, constantly enable their, their children, right? Like if you know that, you know, these, these ultra rich kids that, that their parents are, are these big names that built these big companies. I can't think about anybody in particular right now, but you know, then you hear nothing about the kids. They don't do anything to, to, to create their own name. Like they don't have mm-hmm. any fear of failure. I mean, fear of failure or fear, fear in general is, is a, a phenomenal motivator. It's not very often you see multi-generational businesses where the younger offspring, it's not, it's, it happens, but it's not very often where I've got, multiple people in my head that come to mind um, where dad or grandpa or grandma or somebody started something just like you are working, grinding it out up till two in the morning, getting it done. And then by the time it gets to son or daughter or grandson or granddaughter, they've got, they never had to taste any of that stuff. They didn't have to. And that's, you know, that's what we, we do that though. Like, I don't want my kids to have to go through what I want to go through. I got a friend I was just talking to. His son is a shithead, a complete shithead. And every time this kid calls him in trouble, dad sorts it out. He's about to get the kid an apartment because the kid can't make it. And he's like, well, what is he going to do? Live on the street? Maybe he should. Like, I mean, he literally chooses like drugs and alcohol over work and gives you excuses why he can't make a living. It's like, well, you're going to be dead. I know this guy doesn't have the resources to leave this kid enough money to never work. So like at what point you're going to die? And then what's this kid got? He'll be some bum or mooching off of relative or whatever. Like we, we rob, we rob people of that ability to, to sweat. And be well, I mean, create their own identity, right? I mean, that's yeah. the other thing. Like I'd say, like these, pardon me, not, like these Antifa, f- they have no identity other than they don't even understand what they're doing, right? I mean, mm-hmm. everybody's. I hate to. Everybody, I think, is looking for a purpose in life, and and you know, we're not all Steve Jobs. We're not all. Um, I mean, I hate to say it, like the only thing that we know that happens when when um, we die, and I I can't remember. Uh, no, you know what? I actually heard this. Uh, I think I heard this maybe on your podcast, but but it like it, again, the only thing we know that happens when we die that we know is that the people that love us miss us, right? That but, was uh, Keanu Reeves said that in when asked in an interview what happens when we die, he paused for like a minute and then looked at the interviewer and said, "I know the people that love us will miss us," which I thought. Yeah, was and good. but but guess what? The world around us. I mean, George Washington's dead. Um, uh, I mean, the greatest leaders in our, in our country, in the world are, are, are some of the greatest leaders. They're gone, but we go on now. We could argue whether or not we're in a better or worse shape, but, um, uh, you know, everybody's searching for a purpose. Right. And, and, mm-hmm. um, I think when you, you enable people and that purpose can be super simple. It doesn't need to be, you know, some grandiose plan, right. It can be that I just, I want to have a nice family and I want to, I want to, um, I want my friends and family to be healthy and happy. I want to spend as much time with them. I want to make a living. Um, all of us are different. Uh, but yeah, I think when what you're saying is, I mean, these, these, I think a lot of parents do rob their children of that um, experience and you have to feel pain um, and, and you have to struggle to get the full experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and like you said, you can find out who you are when you're tested. My buddy Z talks about that a lot. Like if, it, without uh, some kind of crucible testing your metal and then pushing past it. This is why people lift heavy weights or run marathons or go to war or get in a ring. They want to, they want to see what they're made of. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather, and- I'd rather do dinner, dinner meetings over beer. That's kind of my, that's my yeah. crucible. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm staring at each other the... across the table to see who's going to get the check. <laughs> <laughs> I Catching the credit card, credit cards in the hat. <laughs> Forgot my wallet. <laughs> I know you uh, and I are both joking because we usually fight over the the check, but uh, that's but that I think I, I do think people uh, I, I just hear it so much. I just was listening. Um, what's the famous psychologist uh, from Canada that's all over the internet now? I actually shared the video. He was asked um, during a like town hall kind of a discussion by a girl like what he thinks about uh, Peterson. Who I'm thinking. Of. Isn't he from Canada? Uh, I don't know if he's where he's from, but I know who you're talking okay. about. She's asking him about like global warming. And somehow he takes her question away from global warming to fix your own self before you waste the energy trying to fix the world. And all he was saying is like, you can't be effective fixing the world or being successful and effective when your own house is broken. And then he went on to talk about like Antifa stating these people or people that do that, that go on these crusades, for the most part, are doing it because they don't want to face their own bullshit. It's easy for me to go, I've got family members that do this. All they want to do is talk about everybody else's life and bullshit because they don't want to deal with their own junk. And it's... Yeah, and anybody who's successful or anybody whatever is a criminal. They did it in a horrible, right? They, they, they robbed, they, steal, they stole like that stuff. And I mean, if we're really getting into it, um, and I, I've been, I don't know why I think about this stuff a lot, but, uh, you know, and I'll use Antifa because I can't, like, I look at them, it's like, okay, um, I, put, I put them in the same category as, as, you know, the kids who are enabled and, and their parents don't let them struggle and find a path. You know, as, as dark as what I'm about to say is, it's the truth. What we've lost in this world is natural selection. In other words, a hundred years ago, or let's go back to, um, let's go back to, we were in life. Let's go back to Chicago in the thirties, forties, fifties, sixties. Like, okay. what do you think would have happened to them if they sure. marched into the streets, right? And, and started pulling that shit. First of all, I'm sure they probably would have been arrested, but I'll tell you right now, they would have had the shit kicked out of them. Mm -hmm. Um, like no, we wouldn't stand for it. And, and part of it is there's this, there's this, um, you know, there's this, this, I don't know what the, but there's this net that's going to catch everybody. Right. Um, that, you know, if you fall, right, we'll catch you. We've got you. Um, I hate to say it. Like some of these people just need to fall and, and, um, and not be caught. And I think honestly, like, that's where fear is a great motivator. They don't have that fear. They, they, That's kind that of will, cool. Sorry, go ahead. No, no. It, it, I mean, it's 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 hard to finish that thought, but they just don't have that fear, and they, um, it doesn't drive them to survive. It doesn't drive them to thrive. It doesn't drive them to to handle their own shit. Mm -hmm. um, and and then they have too much time on their hands, so they take up something they don't understand just to create carnage. Yeah, I with well, a thought that popped in my mind as you're talking about that is. All the times I've traveled around the U.S., especially going west to like where you're at, you think about you're in Utah, the families leaving St. Louis, going west, going to Utah, going to Colorado, going to the Dakotas or Wyoming, and how many of them only made it 100 miles, 50 yeah. miles, and they were all dead, or 100 miles and somebody got dysentery and they ended up being left on the, on the prairie in a, a shallow grave or somebody uh, didn't set up camp right and the indigenous people came and whacked them all. You know, it's like that, that they threw everything they had into a wagon or horseback or foot to go see if they could make the life. And there's bones across the whole world, but it's relevant because we're Americans moving West, man. Like, I hope you make it. You're going to get to Oregon or California or wherever. And no, nope, slipped in a river dead part of guess what? the show now. goes on we're here and and, <laughs> yeah. and the world's still spinning i mean mm -hmm. yeah it's there, there's i i hate to say it like it's deep there's something to that right um you don't wish that upon people but at the same time it's it's like you know i think you and i are the same and, and a lot of the people that we are lucky enough to 
call friends and associate ourselves with shame. Like, like I don't want to hear your excuse. Um, oh, I hate excuses. You and I can come you up said with that a minute ago. I hate huh? them. You said I a minute ago like, you hate excuses. I do too. I mean, uh, my kids will tell you. I say excuses are for losers and homeless people. Like, yeah, is it? That's the only people that you know. Even and, and I'm not making fun of homeless people, but like, there's what you're just telling me. I, I just had a conversation the other day with somebody that screwed up something that we paid them to do, and all they did was just kept giving me excuses. It's like I paid you a lot of money. You've created now hours of work for me and our team to kind of like help you put it back together again, and you're mm-hmm. just telling me why you. F- I don't care. I don't care why you fix it. Yeah, and and honestly, like people are going to in life. I'm sorry, intentionally or unintentionally. Like the 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 victim mentality um, Mm. is is sickening. I mean, like if you don't like something or you feel that there was injustice by someone towards you or towards someone else, like shut the and and do something constructive about it. Um, yeah, I, I can't. I think you. I mean. Could you imagine if, if uh, I called you up and or, or name one any one of our like people we talked to and just called you up with a whole bunch of shitload of excuses? How long would that last? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I, I don't dig it. But you know what? I think you get really good at the more successful you are, and I, and by success that can mean a lot of things. You could be the greatest dancer in the world, or basketball player, or maker of of money. But you, you start to hear excuses like, like you can read faces, you can see body language, you hear the bullshit and you know it like, yeah, no, you know, nah. like when people, oh, but I called you, you let it ring a half a time and you hung up so that you showed yeah. up on, on my call log. Like I was a shithead once I played this game. <laughs> Right, right, right. Well, voice, I've done every one of them. <laughs> yeah, I've done all these things. <laughs> I hate you, to say it, like, you, you, you know what I'm saying, though. But you recognize it so fast, just like stop, zip it. Don't yeah. tell me any more bullshit. Yeah, as much as I hate the bit, like I, I've, I, to some degree, I've, 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 I, if I can't think of the time I've done all those things, I guarantee you, someone else can. I've done it. Like, yeah, um, yeah. It's just, it's just the tolerance. What are you doing? Oh, well, that I. Th- I'm taking a picture of you. That is something else. I think that uh, I've noticed in my friends anyway, any one of my people that I consider a friend, including you especially, will say, I, f- I screw up, but you know, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and remember what I did and I'll press on. A- only fools and liars and cowards will tell you like all their... It's like when somebody shows up and they start telling you how successful they are, how much money they make, or yeah. you yeah. know instantly, like this guy's a douche. This guy's like, "Have you seen my boat? It's out in the harbor." Like, all right, you're a douchebag. You're a yeah. douchebag. Your daddy, your daddy, or grandpa, or somebody else earned that money, not you. It's very rare that you ever see somebody that talks like that or that doesn't admit fault that ever really scraped and scratched. Yeah, the smartest guy in the world, right? I'm not, it's that, that guy, the smartest guy in the world. Like, what's it? It's in uh, Fight Club. It's a great line. It's uh, you're not your khakis, right? Um, I don't know if you remember that line, but it's like I don't. No one. I was trying. No one gives a it. shit about. Yeah, it's uh, Brad Pitt saying it. I can't remember the speech exactly, but the bottom line is like no one gives a shit about what you have. Like, your actions speak louder than words, and and. Um, yeah, no, I mean, we're right on track. It's just, it's, it's crazy. It's, uh, I just tell me, tell me what's going on with that paddle behind you. Oh, uh, this was made by our good friend Herb. Oh yeah. So Herb made that, this. That's a big boy paddle. It's a big boy paddle. I don't know if you can see it. Oh yeah. It says, uh. Certified speed holes get bent. <laughs> Has, who's gotten the spanking? Uh, figuratively or literally? Both. I mean, the next time I'm out there, I might have to let you give me one or two wax. Yeah, it's uh, just for filming purposes. I don't know that uh, actually anybody's been hit with it yet. 
Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, if we wanted to trade blows, that'd be fine. I couldn't even get, uh... <laughs> my brother and Rich, and I'll call him out right now for Christmas. I got him, I got him really nice gifts. I got him each a mouth guard. Well, I got one for myself too. I went over, we were opening gifts and I got him each a mouth guard and a taser, right? I'll call three of us. I'm like, all right. You f- <laughs> Merry Christmas. Here are your gifts. <laughs> Did you first? really? I'm the only f- guy that got tased. Oh, they wouldn't take it. Yeah, so all the action. <laughs> That's awesome. So we could That's do the same thing with the paddle. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, you're good with That's, gifts. Actually, here, I, I got the tasers right here, actually. <laughs> That's so funny. They wouldn't do it. No. Oh, Rich is a big, tough, like, D1 wrestler. Well, it's just nuts. It's, it's just absolutely nuts. But uh, you should sneak in there and just give him one, just to like the butt cheek. That's not a horrible idea. Uh, yeah, let's. You just gotta, you gotta get him. Scenario. You gotta get him immobilized because he's gonna double leg you and slam you through a wall, though. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's definitely tougher. I'm probably meaner, but he's definitely tougher. I, I don't want to piss him off too much. Yeah, um, he's got plus, youth. He's got, got strength, youth, strength, training, looks, <laughs> looks. Hair. He's, a handsome, he's, a, he's a handsome man. Uh, he's, a, he's an absolutely handsome man. I got what a is he like? Two hundred and two hundred and twenty-five, two hundred and thirty pounds of solid muscle. His forearms are like my freaking thighs. Yeah, uh, you, got a, here, you got a picture here, of him. I got, I got a great picture of him here, right here. I don't know if you saw this one. <laughs> that's our that's our vice president of engineering right there. Huh? That's <laughs> but awesome. But he's uh, and he's pretty smart, so he doesn't want to knock his head. Now, here he is again. This is I, I give Andrew a little. There's a nice picture mm, of Andrew. I love that mustache. I love yeah. that mustache. It's creepy. It's, it's uh, yeah, he's a great guy. We're we're lucky that way. We got to get. When are you coming out he here a, again? Does he have a Good. derby? I don't know. We need to get Good him question. a derby with that mustache. Uh, I want to come out there this winter. I want to go skiing with you. So we'll Yeah, I want to do that, but I want to get a couple of courses going out here too. Well, let's do that. When we'll talk offline, let's get something let's get something scheduled. I'd like to do that. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to pass on some of the the lessons that you've learned in your short fruitful life. Uh, parting yeah. words, people listening, give them something Something to remember you by. Oh, and before that, how do they find you? Uh, well, um, they can find us. Uh, they can. If they, if, I don't know why, but if anybody wanted to email me, my email is bob at alpha Um And then uh, I'm on Facebook, Robert Daniels, and on Facebook. And I don't know what my uh, Instagram thing is. It's I have to look that up. Um, I don't do much with it, but Alpha Munitions is, is really what we go after Instagram. Um, Alpha it's Munitions. Probably Alpha Munitions on Instagram. Um, we've got some some cool new products coming, so uh, look for those. And, um, yeah, if anybody wants to reach out, we're uh, obviously just don't be a – You can get uh, them You can get them set up with high-end brass. Yeah, I know you, you can also. set them up with high-end brass. we got our, our, these badass new uh, chamber reamers that we're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, right here, these are coming very quickly, and um, we've got our new uh, brass cleaner coming. We've got a few other, few other projects, but uh, um, yeah, I just re- reach out that way. Those are the easiest ways to uh, easiest ways to find me. Parting words: If somebody that listens uh, or watches never crossed your way again, what would you leave them with? Uh, don't be a shithead. Uh, I like that. Yeah, no. Um, I, honestly, like, uh, I, I think that I think that to some degree, like everybody in this um, this world is uh, capable of doing great things, and and I think honestly, um, you just have to be focused and set your mind to something, and and uh, endure the pain. If you do that and people see it, they'll help you. Uh, and, and, and don't make, don't make excuses. Um, Mm -hmm. 
So that's my parting words. And then my other parting words are to the community that we, uh, that we work with um, as far as the precision rifle community and, and uh, all the people who have helped us uh, um, to this point. Thank you. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you. And we appreciate all of your support, including yours, Mickey. You've been, thank you. Can't thank you enough. Um, uh, and we're just warming up and, and, and more great things to come. Awesome. If you guys dug this podcast, which I think you probably should, share it with your buddies. I know there's going to be a few vulgar words in here. Drew will beep them out for your younger people's ears. But if you got some some young men or women that are heading off into the world, let them hear it. You can hear uh, some stuff that I think Bob passed on that's invaluable to uh, – there are no shortcuts, but there's definitely things to step over and around and not step in. And if you – if you can do that, it's uh, more better, as they say. It's more better. Yeah, and I didn't mention this before. I just mentioned on here, like, if you want to do something with a giveaway for some some of our alpha shirts or whatnot, like, figure out something and let's let's give uh, let's give some of those away to uh, to some of your viewers. All right. Well, we'll figure out how to do that, and we'll get it done on. Uh, we'll do Instagram or YouTube, and we'll give them away. So if right. you guys are watching, and buy this. gunfighter gun oil right here. Oh, if you want it, nice. this, this stuff is phenomenal. You want this, and uh, if you haven't tried it, this is the new cocaine crack of. Yeah, you're telling me about delicious. that. You're, you're buddies with those guys. They're right down the street from you. Um, what is that? It it's is. Uh, rifle, but it's it is honestly, it's it's delicious. It's uh. It's the Black Rifle Espresso Mocha um, iced coffee drink. It's uh, so it's caffeine and sugar. Well, I don't really look at it that way. It's it's Rah. basically uh, an <laughs> unbelievably <look> delicious, <laughs> refreshing cock drink. Um, in honey, who's that uh, woman that you're getting a blowjob from? Oh, I don't really look at it that way. It's more me relaxing, <laughs> dear. Just. I don't look at it that way. I like that. Optics. It's all about optics. I don't That's, look at it that holy way. Holy shit. Could you write that down for me? I have to write that down and remember that. Thank you. As an excuse to use later? It's, a, it's me relaxing. Me <laughs> relaxing. <laughs> you guys that have watched or viewed, we appreciate you taking the time. If you're into long range rifle shooting, uh, or have an interest in the future, check these guys out, follow them online. You'll see some cool stuff. The guys that shoot this stuff, uh, buy it, that load it. There are companies that buy from you with their head stamps on it. So somebody may go out and buy a really high end cartridge, not knowing that it's your brass underneath the bullet, right? So if somebody's in that business of loading, they could come to you and say, hey, we want 5 million pieces of XYZ and you can make it for them, right? Yes, sir. Cool. You guys that uh, have watched, don't be dickheads. Tell somebody you love them. And uh, that's all. Peace. Till next Thank time. You. Visit our website, carrytrainer.com, for information about classes held throughout the U.S., Carry Trainer Apparel, and upcoming projects. You can also email us at training at carrytrainer.com for information about setting up your own private course or speaking engagement training at carrytrainer.com or carrytrainer.com.